I think one of the greatest goals a human being should have is to find something that they sincerely love doing, that they're passionate about, and then to figure out how to make a living doing it. Because we spend so much time doing what we do every day, right? And the book, Grad to Grown Up, gives them a roadmap on how they can identify that passion, make sure it's real, but then how to get interviews and then how to capture the job. Let's learn how our next guest gets up, dress up, and show up on purpose. Enjoy the episode. Hello, morning enthusiasts. Welcome to the Best Morning Routine Ever podcast. I am your host, Dr. Lunid, and today I have the honor of introducing a very special guest to the show, Gene Wright. He is the author of Rags to Riches, and that alone tells us so many things, right? Because we're going to learn about how do you go from that to riches, but also what does that mean as an adult, right? So he, he shares critical information uh, with his uh, high school teacher and his daughter about information on success and failures that, you guessed it, dismystify adulthood. Things that we should know and don't know. And he talks about the five sections. With, uh, we're looking at jobs, search, life, career, personal finance, and health relationship, and how that provides a real-world insight uh, that we often overlook as adults. So with no further ado, Gene, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Dr. Lanine. I, I appreciate it. Like I mentioned before, I've had the opportunity to listen to a couple of your podcasts and I really enjoyed them. I think you're doing a great service. So thank you for giving back the way you do. Yes, my absolute pleasure. And thank you for coming on and adding to that body of knowledge, right? So let's jump right into that and talk about your why. I know you have, you said you have four girls. We were joking earlier offline. <laughs> the reason why you lose your full head of hair it's because you have four adult uh, <laughs> girls. So let's talk about your wife for getting into this space. Yeah. So, so my life is, you know, my greatest accomplishment is my marriage, Lenine. I've been married to the same woman for 39 years. And yeah. thank God I, uh, I didn't blow that. But I, I had four children. The three oldest were girls. My youngest was, my, uh, was, was a boy. But yeah. like I mentioned to you, your audience can't see me, but I am completely bald. But I used to have a full head of hair like you, curly hair. <laughs> But all three of my girls were teenagers at the same time, all right? So <laughs> by the time the last one got out of the teenage years, I lost every hair on my head, all right? But I did survive. I did survive. And listen, I've been very blessed. I've been <laughs> very, very blessed. Uh, I've had uh, a, a great career. I was in corporate America for a division of an international Fortune 100 company where I was promoted five times in seven years. My last position, Lanid, was heading up all these coast operations were probably over a thousand people reporting to me. Mm -hmm. uh, I was making a great salary, but I will be honest with you. I was on an airplane every single day. I was never home. Mm -hmm. So for me, I made a decision to go into my own business. Okay. Yeah. Executive search, not so much. It wasn't a financial reason it, because I, I had young children and I wanted to be home at night. That's right. now, the greatest gift I got, is I opened an executive search firm because I had hired, I had used a lot of executive search firms in attracting my talent at Alcatel, the company I was with, and I thought I could add some value. What I didn't know, but the reason why I stayed 30 years in that business, Lenid, is that gave me purpose, right? Yeah. I've had the, and this is probably unique to your audience, I've had the, I've been blessed to have placed over 1,000 C-level executives in positions. Hmm. I've interviewed over 10,000. My company, Rice Cohen International, grew to be one of the largest executive retained search firms in the world. Hmm. The message I'm going to tell to your audience is the same message I know you, that you tell on your podcast. The executives that are most valuable to their shareholders, to their boards, and to their staff are the executives that have come to the conclusion that you can't have real professional success without having personal success. Right. They Executive have, coaching. They have purpose in their lives. 
-hmm. And the message and my book, Grad to Grown Up, is all around that message, how important it is to have purpose in your lives. You know, there was a survey done recently by the conference board. They interviewed over 2,000 executives, Mm Lenny. These were senior successful executives. 53% of them said they had no job satisfaction in what they did every day. They woke up and they went to work for a paycheck. The message I want to send out to a lot of people, especially the young adults listening, is I think one of the greatest goals a human being should have is to find something that they sincerely love doing, that they're passionate about, and then to figure out how to make a living doing it. Because we spend so much time doing what we do every day, right? And the book, Grad to Grown Up, gives them a roadmap on how they can identify that passion, make sure it's real, but then how to get interviews and then how to capture the job. So that's one of the messages, and that's one of the things in my life that the executive search firm has given me, the ability for me to put an executive and a company together and the difference it made. A lot of these clients that I had, Lenine, they were venture-backed firms, private equity-backed firms. They were small firms. The executives that I put into their jobs not only would determine how well that firm did, but in a lot of cases, determine whether that firm would exist five, 10 years down the road. So it gave me purpose. I felt like I was making a difference. That is huge. Finding purpose because your purpose, your passion will wake you up in the morning, right? With us, just like kids, you know, when they're, when they're excited every morning, bright eyed, you know, they come into your room, they're ready for the day. We lost that zest along the way. Um, you know, what do you think caused that? Well, let me tell you something. And, and let me tell you what I think caused it. I'll give you my own experience. Mm-hmm. You know, one of the things I talk about in the book, Grad to Grown Up, is for the last 25 plus years, Lindy, I would bring four college interns into my company every summer for eight weeks. Mm -hmm. These were bright kids. They were all going into their senior year. They interviewed against probably 30 or 35 people. We selected four, right? I felt if they were coming into my office, I had, I needed to give back to them. So I would Mm -hmm. schedule a couple hours with them every week. It started off as Gene's life lessons, things I wish I knew going into my senior year. And if I could share with them some of the mistakes I made that might help them avoid some of the potholes of life, I wanted to do that. What came out of it was so many other questions that that led me to, listen, they weren't prepared, most of them, not only to start their professional lives, but their personal lives. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I want to tell you, and it goes back to your original question, when I would ask them, why, why, do you, why do you want to be a lawyer? Why do you want to be an engineer? Why do you want to be a, a CPA accountant? The overwhelming response to the need was somebody influential in their life, a parent, a grandparent, a teacher, a mentor, kind of guided them in a certain area, right? Mm-hmm. You can make a good living doing this. Well, reality is so many of them came back to me a couple of years later and hated what they were doing. I'll give you a couple right. of examples. Two of them went on to two of the best law schools in America, NYU and Boston College. They both graduated in the top 25% of their graduating class. They both got hired at big law firms. They hated it, the billable hours. Not a lot of people are happy being lawyers. I'm just giving you this example. Right? Yeah. They hated what they were doing. However, if you were to talk to them, there was things they were passionate about but they didn't have any clue on how to get, get a job or, or create a career. So the message I'm gonna to send to your parents and grandparents, <laughs> listen, it's okay to talk to them about a plan B, but if you have a young person in your life that they're passionate about anything, I don't care, a, a lawn cutting business, creating video games, I want you to encourage the heck out of that. You know, Every great dream, as you know, starts with a dreamer. Yeah. So let me finish the story. My daughter, Courtney, who I wrote the book with, she went to Lehigh University. She she graduated at Lehigh. If you graduate with a 3.75 GPA or higher, they'll pay for you to stay and get your master's degree. She came out with two majors, English and economics, right? She stayed and got her master's. She thought she wanted to be a lawyer. And I said, wait a second, based on my experience, Courtney, I have an idea. 
Let's reach out to some boutique law firms and see if we can find a partner that would take you in this summer and expose you to what it's about being a lawyer. And the key thing here is I helped her write the email. This is in the book, Grad to Grown Up. She reached out and said, I have a passion for being a lawyer. I am willing to come in and work for free. That's the key. Anybody will take you in if you're willing to work for free. (laughs) So they took her in for eight weeks. And this lawyer exposed her the need to everything involved with being a lawyer, the administrative piece, the research. He took her into the courtroom five or six times that summer. You know what? She came to me at the end of the summer and she said, Dad, I don't want to be a lawyer. I, my passion has always been I want to be an English teacher. But I didn't think that was worthy. I, I, all the kids I was graduating with were going to Wall Street or doing this. And I said, listen, you, you know, I believe in what Mark Twain said, Lenny. Two greatest days in a person's life is the day you're born and the day you realize why you were born. Yep. Let me just finish the story. So this summer, I'm moving her out of her out of her classroom, and she we stop at the Wawa in her town to get a sandwich. And there was three young young adults working at this Wawa that was that were in her classes, and I saw how they were relating to her and what they were saying to her and the respect they had for her. I walked out of that wild and I said, Courtney, you're doing exactly what you should be doing. So the message here, if you're a young person and you have a passion, reach out. Senior people will help you. Tell them you'll come in for free and get exposure. Get exposure to it. And if you're, and if you're passionate about it, the, one of the goals in life is to find something that you love and then figure out a way to make a living doing it. That's one of the yeah. things that shows them. Sound advice, Gene. Getting exposure. That's important. And I love your message to the elderly about grandkids and, and parents and grandparents is really to hone in what your kids are, are, are passionate about. Encourage it. You know, if it's painting, buying that, those painting materials, the canvas, whatever to kind of encourage and push them towards that direction. Because you're right. We live in a world where we don't, we're not, a lot of people are not living in their purpose. You know, that God-given talent, talent that you're referring to. Your daughter realizing, hey, I don't want to go to law school anymore, but I will like to teach, English teacher. Right? That is so crucial because if you have a lot of more people who are filled with joy and zest and love what they're doing, we're going to have a happier world. Absolutely. And, you know, Lamid, I don't know if I mentioned this to you, but in 2008, my wife and I started a charity called the Plant a Seed Inspire a Dream Foundation. And basically what it does, the charity takes young adults between the ages of 10 and 18 that have a passion, but they're coming from the underserved communities where there's not money to send a person to the art class or to take the guitar lesson or to go to karate. We step in, we will find them that sensei, that teacher, that instructor, and then we will give them an annual scholarship. We interview the families, the mentor, we check with them every month. And we've helped over 800 kids from the underserved youth pursue their passions. And that's the key, you know, take the young people, if they're passionate about something, our responsibility is to encourage the heck out of it. You know, and, yeah. and, all, and, and all the financial rewards from this book, Grad to Grown Up, go, are going to the charity to help more kids, the Planet Seed Inspire a Dream Foundation. Hats off to you, Gene. You just gave me goosebumps, that servant heart. That servant leadership, because you're in a, a place to give back, and that's why you're you're doing with with you're fostering. And you, I love your focus. It's about passion. Yes. And it's not just starting a business, but you are really saying, coming from being in a C level executive yourself and having worked with thousands of them, you're saying even to the executives who have the credentials and the the, the titles behind their name and the years of experience, still, it's not too late to find something that you enjoy. You can find a company that gives you, that has the same values, that that has the same drive, the same passions as you to grow. Absolutely. And even more important, that young adult coming out of school, I don't want them to wait to their 40s or 50s to find that thing they're passionate about. If there's something they're passionate about, it, I want to encourage the heck that they figure out a way to make a living doing it. You know? Yeah. How do they go about finding that? So we talked about the grandparents and the parents actually getting out of the way, essentially, so they can so they can thrive. Give us some tips from your book, Grad to Grown Up, on how one can foster that passion. Yeah. First of all, 
you mentioned something before. If there's things that when you wake up in the morning that you're excited about doing, you know, someone doesn't have to push you. you just, you're just excited about it. Okay. Then I encourage you to figure out how can I possibly maybe make a living doing this? And one of the things I'm going to tell you, right, is don't be afraid to reach out. People will bring you in and expose you to it, right? Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid to reach out to senior executives. Let me give you a little example, Lenid. I happen to be on a bunch of these lists of top executive recruiters in the world. So I would get between 80 and 120 resumes sent to me every week. Mm -hmm. Now, Lenid, I couldn't even go through these. But second of all, the way the executive retained industry works, you specialize in specific vertical markets, right? Yeah. I was the, the number one recruiter in the management consulting and the ed tech vertical. So the managing partners at places like McKinsey, like KPMG, the CEO of Mercer. Out of that 80 to 120 resumes, you could be a CEO of the number one consumer products company. I can't help you, right? So I couldn't even respond to them. Maybe one person a month was in my space. However, once or twice a year, I get an email from a young person and the email would say this, I've done some research. I know you're a thought leader in the executive search industry. I have a passion for executive search or human resources. Would you be willing to spend a few minutes with me and give me some guidance? You know what, Lenny? I always responded to that email. Yeah. And let me tell you something. I place these senior guys. I've asked them. Most senior people will do the exact same thing. You know why? For no other reason, they'd want someone to help someone in their family. Yeah. So I want to encourage any young adults, do not be intimidated. It's easy to get their emails. The book explains how to do that. Reach out, let them know, get exposure, hear what they're talking about. That will, if you're passionate about it, hear what gave them their passion. Why are they staying in it? Any advice they have for you? So that's something I would encourage them to do. Okay, let's talk about how to keep that relationship going without needing an internship or a job, right? Because you have to be uh, amicable in a way that um, you're not searching for something. You just simply are looking for information and you want to build this relationship. It, how do you do the give and take? You know, what can I offer you to maintain this relationship? Well, the one thing I can tell you a bunch of stories of young people I've mentored where they've had those conversations, right? And then they were invited in for an interview. And here's the difference, you know, here's the difference. When that senior person sends the resume over, let me give you an example of a young man I've helped recently. There was a charity that knew about me. And the charity helped foster kids that never knew their parents get into college. And then if they graduated from college in need and they were having trouble getting their first job, they'd reach out to some community leaders to see if they'd give them some guidance. Mm -hmm. so I got a call from this charity and they said, listen, we have this great young man coming out of Temple. He can't, he's really having a hard time getting that first job. Will you talk to him? I said, sure. First thing I asked him is, okay, what was your major? Sports management. I'm like, oh my God, sports management. <laughs> sports management. Because first of all, there's very few jobs in that field. And most first jobs, there's a hook. They know someone that pulls them in. So I said, so, so what have you done so far? He goes, I sent my resume to the Eagles, to the Phillies, to the 76ers, to the Flyers. <laughs> What's happening is no one's gotten back to me. I'm like, well, let me explain the first rule, all right? If any of those franchises are looking for somebody that has absolutely no experience, they're going to reach out to you and the other thousand resumes they got. You're never going to break in. I said, I will help you, but I got to ask you two questions, first of all. How passionate are you about this sports management field? Mm -hmm. Because why do you ask? I said, because on this journey, if we get lucky, you may end up in Des Moines, Iowa, working for a single A baseball team. Are you willing to pick up and move to Des Moines, Iowa? I'll go anywhere. I said, okay, great. I said, second question. We may go on this journey and we're probably going to strike out. So I need to know what your plan B is before we go on this journey together. What are you willing to do if we can't break you in? Yeah. Just, um, I go into sales. I said, great. There's a lot more sales jobs than sports management jobs. So what did I do with them? I said, here, here's your homework. 
I want you to identify. We're going to start in a 50 mile radius of Philadelphia. Then when we strike out, we're going to expand in 300 mile radiuses. And then if we get lucky, you end up in Des Moines, Iowa, working for a single A baseball. Team. You need to do the homework. I want you to identify every C level executive in those major franchises. Then we'll move down to triple A and double A. Here's how you get those emails. I'm going to help you write the email out to them. In the book, Grad the Grown Up, we actually give them that email. Nice. It goes with, hi, I, have a, I, I just graduated. I have a passion for this business. I've done some research. I know you're a thought leader in this space. Would you be willing to give me a little time to give me some guidance? Sends it out. I said, calls me up. He says, listen, the chief marketing officer of the Philadelphia 76ers says, I can talk to you on Friday. I said, okay, really? Let's strategize on that call. And I, in the book, we walked them through how to start the call, the questions you want to ask, how to end the call, mm -hmm. and then how to continue the relationship after. Yeah. But I said, after the call, call me. He calls me. I said, how did it go? Because I think it went really well. I said, why? He goes, he's invited me in on Wednesday to meet four people. I'm like, wait a second. He's what? invited you to meet four people. That means there's a job there. He's not going to waste four people's time unless there's a job. So let me prepare you for how to handle it. <laughs> and I walked them through in the book, Grad to Grown Up, Lenny. We take them through. This is another one of the goals I think every human being should have. Every human being should want to become a grandmaster of interviewing. Why do you want to be a grandmaster of interviewing? Because when you interview for that job you really want, you're most likely going to be interviewing against other strong candidates. My experience has been the grandmaster not only gets offered the job, but they get paid higher. So we walked them through how to do that. And I taught this young man. Bottom line was he got hired in the corporate sales department of the Philadelphia 76ers. All right. He got his foot in the door and didn't have to move. Look so at that. Said, all right. So there's, there's a way you got to handle it. The first thing is you don't, don't be intimidated. Okay. You have to understand how to handle that conversation in the book, Grad the Grown Up, it walks them through that. And then the young person has to realize it's up to them to maintain the relationship. Yeah. So when do you reach back out? What, what do you do? You have, to end, you have to end the conversation just saying, would it be okay to just give you an update on what's going on? But you also want to get something out of that conversation. So there's questions you want to ask that person before it's over. So hopefully that helps a little bit. It does, and I and I'm curious because it sounds like you have uh, the text in the book, so the the follow up, what to say, and how to end the call, the statement. That type of guidance is super helpful because yeah. what you say can break a make a deal. Absolutely, absolutely, uh, and and that it goes back to what we talked about. Yeah, find purpose, find that thing you're passionate about, and don't stop until you get the job you want. <laughs> Because every day you're going to be going to do that. And even in the book, Grad to Grown Up, I'll share with you, I know how much easier it is, Lenny, to find that purpose in your life when your financial position is in a better place. Mm -hmm. Part of what in the book, there's a chapter, Personal Finance. I came from nothing. And I share with them easy things to do that's allowed me to acquire great wealth in my life. Very simple things from you got your first 401k, what should you do with it, right? You know, how do you, you know, there's things I've done about every month, just going through what your net worth is. You know, my, my, my started off for years, is, it wasn't my net worth, it was my net de debt. <laughs> <laughs> that helped me get to, yeah. But it takes them through things that I've done. And if they, you know, that they can do and they can incorporate that's allowed me to acquire great wealth in my life. Because I know it's easier when your financial piece is, is, is in place. It, 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 it kind of gives you a little easier road to find that purpose and pursue it. I can't agree with you more, um, Gene. Um, rags to riches. It, it is a lot. Some people say I've been poor, I've been rich, but I like being rich better. I think both of Wall Street said that. <laughs> and it's true because if you don't have your needs met, it's very hard to focus on self-actualization or finding a purpose and serving other people because you're focusing about whether your next meal is or whether or not you're going to be able to make rent. So I absolutely agree. It, it reminds me of the Maslow, um, you know, the Maslow um, hierarchical hierarchy chart. 
yeah. basic needs, belongingness, per, um, purpose, and self-actualization right out the tier, the top of that. And that's what we're referring to, getting to that place of, of, of that passion and that purpose. Yeah, I mean, I tell people in the, you know, the financial piece of it, what, what it's done for myself personally and the people I've mentored, it just smooths out some of the bumps in the road of life, mm -hmm. right? It makes the bumps a little easier, right? And so it's important. And, and in there, you know, if they can take, I've made a lot of mistakes financially. I, I talk about the mistakes and I want them to learn from my mistakes. They don't make the same mistakes but I give them some basic things that they can do that can make a difference in their lives. Absolutely. Now, I would love to hear about your morning routine. How do you get up, dress up, and show up, Jane? Listen, my morning routine is, is pretty standard, you know, and, uh, you know, I take it even a step further than you. I, I talk about it being, you know, identifying your linchpin, right? You know, people don't know what a linchpin is. A linchpin is a little pin that keeps the wheel in place. That pin falls out, the wheel falls off, and everything collapses. What are the things you need to do every day in your life to keep that pin from falling out? You know, when, when I'm most stressed, I'm going away from my morning routine. You know, I'm not watching the pin, but my routine is very simple. I wake up, first of all, and I, I do some basic stretching. It's like seven or eight minutes just to get my body moving. Mm -hmm. I come down, I make breakfast for me and my wife every day. Now with me, let me tell you, a lot of people, they struggle, you know, this whole weight thing going on in our, in, in our country, in the world about obesity. A lot of people to this day, I was having a conversation last night with a young man who's, he's been yo-yo dieting and he just doesn't eat breakfast. Breakfast is essential. And here's the other thing I want to tell you. I talk about this in Grad to Grown Up. Diets don't work. You have to find healthy food that you enjoy eating. Lifestyle. Eat so I have oatmeal six or seven days a week for breakfast. Now, oatmeal, but it's not just regular oatmeal. I got raisins, I got walnuts, I got berries, I got bananas in that oatmeal, skim milk, right? Yeah. But it fills me up and I enjoy it. Now, other people, maybe it's egg whites, but you have to have a healthy breakfast. Protein yeah. filled. Yep. Release, release, slow release of energy throughout the day, not the sugary stuff, not the um, high fructose cereal, um, uh, carbs, because then that spikes up your insulin, spikes up your energy, then you drop. Absolutely. And then what I'll do after breakfast is I go and I have a little a little yoga room, I call it, right? And I go in there, and the first thing I do is I read. And I'll probably read for 10 minutes. Usually it's multiple books, a few pages in each book, right? Then uh, then I pray. I pray. And, uh, and in that prayer, I'm talking about gratitude. And that's one of the things I want to share with you. I, I think, you know, young people don't understand how important it is to build a mindset of gratitude, you know. And sometimes, you know, it's I identify at least three things every day. That's why I, that's my I encourage. If you can wake up every morning, and identify at least three things that you're grateful for. And some days, Lene, it's just I'm grateful for the sun coming out. I'm grateful for the breakfast I made today. I'm yep. grateful for the conversation I had. But if you can do that every day, I promise you there'll be days when you have six, seven, eight things. You're going to look at the glass not as half empty. It's going to be half full. And some days it may be overflowing. Mm -hmm. And it is so much more, I think, you have so much more to add in life if you have that mindset of gratitude. So I do that every day. And then what I try to do is I identify one thing I try to do that day that an act of kindness. Today, I called someone and wished them a happy birthday. Mm -hmm. But in the morning, if I can think of something, you know, what can I do that maybe, you know, that might be a, an act of kindness, you know? Th that's what I'll do. And then I exercise every day. Today, I swam for 40 minutes. Yesterday, I lifted weights. But if I do that every day, my linchpin stays in place. The wheels, <laughs> the wheel keeps turning, you know? Yeah. And, and you look amazing. You feel like you're, you're just vibrant, right? You just, you have life. It's not bad for 93 exactly. years old, right? Man? No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Swimming for 40 minutes. And how long have you been practicing that? 93 years old. I'm not 93. I'm old. Please, I, do I look that old? <laughs> That's what you said. I bought it. That you look, I look last younger than that. <laughs> 
I'm in my 60s right now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, that's the power of a morning routine. You, you I would have bought it because you're living in the vibrant. Listen, the woman that turned me on to yoga, she's literally 92 years old. If you met Helen Mead, she is the most flexible human being you've ever met. She is in such unbelievable shape mentally and physically, you know. Uh, but uh, I've been doing that routine now. It's approaching eight years. Nice. Yeah. It, it's habitual. You don't think twice about it. Like in that linchpin. Yeah. It keeps the wheel turning. It keeps you showing up for your clients and for your your kids, with your your wife. Yeah. It's it's powerful. And I can I I have a similar um, a gratitude journal. I have a morning routine as well as you can imagine. And it's non negotiable. The gratitude thing, three things every morning. And sometimes it's like I'm grateful for having water clean water because i'm from haiti and that's not that, that that's a luxury you know you you got to go to the well and get water and now you can't drink that you have to purify it you have to buy it in a little baggie to drink it and here in america i my first thing in the morning is drinking a glass of water and, and that usually that usually goes in my gratitude and you find more things to be grateful for as you said yeah yeah and i know haiti is still struggling you know we help uh -huh. we help one of the villages down there my wife and i every year just give them school supplies, you know? So you're right. There's basic things that we take for granted, Lenny, that other parts of the world, you know, simple for us, but they mean so much, you know? Yeah. Then we can see that the glass is overflowing, the yeah. abundance that we're surrounded for. And it's all the mindset. That's what I love about getting up, dressing up and showing up. Showing up is really doing the mental work. It's, it's the prayer right for you and the reading you know you're stimulating the mind you know one of the things i talk about in the book grad to grown up when it is with these young people that i mentor some of them i have to explain to them you know how you have to show up once you get the job i mean i, I i'll say to them listen there's no elevator to success you got to take the stairs right yeah. right and what does what does it mean taking the stairs it's first of all, you got to show up, right? I don't care how bright you are. If you're hired by one of these Fortune 500 firms, you're hired in 20 other kids just as bright as you. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what? You fast forward four years later, two out of those 20 on average are going to be promoted, right? Yeah. What did those two do different than the other 18, right? And trying to explain that sometimes, you know, and getting them ready for what to expect is, is important. Yeah. Looking forward to, to reading Grad to Grown Up. Uh, it really, the insight, and I love that you, you, you pick graduate students who all seldom come out lost. Lost and confused and needing a direction and getting into corporate America or even starting their own business um, lack that guidance. And so I, I'm really, really honored to have sat with you today and share that um that passion well uh, in in the work that you do you're truly a servant leader gina you're, you're you're serving your community and it's been such an honor having you on the show so i want you to please tell us how can we connect with you where can we find you okay so first of all if you want you can go right to the website of of, of the book grad to grown up.com g-r-a-d-t-o grown up.com and your listeners lenita if they want they can download some chapters for free just to read some, right? There's one there that tells them what to do with their 401k, you know, how to invest it, right? You can, on LinkedIn, I will accept any invite, you know, Gene Rice, Rice Cohen International. The company is ricecoheninternational.com. The, the charity, if you have any listeners out there that maybe are struggling financially and they have a young person that is passionate about something, but they can't pursue it, Go to plantaseedfoundation.org, fill out an application, all right? And Lenita, I want to tell you, if there's anyone listening to this show that grad to grown up can help, but maybe they're having a tough time financially, send me a message on LinkedIn and I'll send them the book for free. <laughs> You're amazing. You continue to honor me. I mean, uh, <laughs> it's been such an honor having you on here, Gene. Thank you so much for sharing today and coming on. Thank you. You keep doing what you're doing. All right. And listen, if there's any chance you might be interested in giving me some of those curly hair back. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you're not going to believe it, but I had hair like that at some point, right? <laughs> uh, 
you, you're saying I, I, I can't visualize it. I can't visualize it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to see some pictures. I'm going to go to LinkedIn. I'm going on your profile. <laughs> you take care of yourself, okay? Yeah, it's, been, you. it's been a joy. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. Please comment and tell us what was your favorite part, your favorite habit that you are going to try out for yourself today. Comment below. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe. Until next time, I will see you at the top of your best morning routine ever. Stay blessed.